So there are two ways that we can live our life. There are two ways that we can use our mind. And that just keeps things really simple. Um, we can either use our mind and use our life and use our intelligence to focus in on all of the ever-changing descriptions. And the ever-changing descriptions in the Balanced View training we just simply call data. It keeps it very simple. We don't need to complicate it with lots of descriptive frameworks or ideas and concepts. Everything that we can describe or experience we simply call data. And the way that we've been trained to use our minds, the way that I was trained to use my mind, was to focus in on these descriptions and to try and work out how to live and what action to take and how to speak and how to relate based on all of these descriptions. And um, I can look at my life and I can see very clearly what the result of living my life and using my intelligence in this way was. And my experience was very much that of being on a roller coaster. So the thoughts and emotions and physical sensations were always changing. And you can look at your own experience now and to just to check whether that's the case or not. Um, and I look at my experience and I can see there's no way I can predict what thought is just going to pop into my mind stream next, what sensation I'm suddenly going to feel in my body, what rush of emotion is just going to you know, suddenly appear. And so basing my, um, my actions and my decisions on these ever-changing descriptions led to a certain way of living. But it meant that um, I usually felt very uncertain about how to act in the world, about what decisions to make about how to relate to people. It made everything very tense and often very awkward and I very often felt uncomfortable because I was focusing in on these descriptions. And so sitting and speaking to people there'd be all kinds of things going on. You know when you're in a conversation you know the different thoughts that pop into your head or oh, oh, that was interesting, oh, I, I, oh god they're bored now, oh, I don't know what to say or you know how can I make them like, make them like me or you know, perhaps I can make them laugh, or all, all of these different thoughts and emotions that just happen <clears throat> just to pass through your mind when, when you're in conversation with somebody. And basing conversation and basing what I should say on these different thoughts and emotions um, it is a certain way of relating, but it always left me feeling slightly isolated. And the reason for that was that I was basing all of these ideas on this concept that I had to do something about them, that these were the things that I needed to focus in on and that were the way that would inform me as how to, how to act, you know, how to, how to relate. And what we're introduced to here in the Balanced View training is that there is another way that we can use our intelligence and that we can live our life. And that is to rely on the opening intelligence that is the basis of all of these descriptions. So the first thing to do is to identify opening intelligence for yourself right now. And that is as simple as just to stop thinking for a moment. Just pause your train of thought and allow yourself to notice this alertness, this presence, this intelligence that is the nature of any intelligence that you can identify right now. It's the power to know. It's what's listening to these words, looking through your eyes. It's this vast intelligence that is open like a cloudless sky. Now, when you begin to identify this intelligence in your own experience, and you begin to make the choice to rely on this intelligence, rather than all of the descriptions, then there's this dramatic shift in the way that life is experienced. So my experience of life before was like this roller coaster, and my description of reality and myself was one of a subject living in a world inhabited by other objects and then basing my actions and my relationships on this model of reality, on this model of what my identity was. And once I began relying on open intelligence then everything began to shift because I began to see that whatever I was experiencing was known only in, of, as and through this opening intelligence and no other way. And the way to become certain of this 
is to take short moments of allowing the descriptions, allowing the data, just to flow on by and be exactly as they are. And in doing this, you give yourself the opportunity to recognize that whatever you're experiencing is data shining forth from open intelligence. Not as an intellectual concept, but as an everyday lived reality. Instinctively recognizing the basis of your experience for exactly what it really is. No longer believing in the independent nature of any of these labels but recognizing all of them as this seamless, spontaneous flow of pure benefit. So this is the shift that occurs. It's a shift away from describing ourselves as these isolated, separate individuals inhabiting a world populated by all of these other isolated, separate individuals to one of a seamless reality where everything is intimately and effortlessly interconnected. And that includes ourselves and everything about ourselves. So all of your thoughts, emotions and sensations are evidence of opening intelligence. And short moments are the way for you to become certain that this is the case for you in your life, with whatever your life is providing you. So nothing needs to change about you. The things about you that you're convinced are signs of your imperfection are actually evidence of your complete natural perfection when left to be exactly as they are. The first step is recognizing everything as the shining forth of open intelligence. All of the data, all of the descriptions, this dynamic energy of open intelligence. Not something separate. Inseparable like the breeze is inseparable from the air. Now the results of making this shift and this choice in the way that we utilize our mind and use our intelligence is very, very profound. So I love the question about free speech and freedom of speech and benefit. When I was basing my relating and my actions and my speech on the conventional model of my identity as being this separate individual with all of these um, qualities that I needed to develop and protect and work out and cultivate, then my speech mostly was used as a tool of defense. So I developed this identity with all of these labels about who I was and my personal history and the things I liked and the things I didn't like, the political opinions that I had and my experiences that I'd had and built up this identity, this, this or try to build up this identity of who I was. You know, who, who is this person? Who is Toby? You know, who is this guy? You know, what does he like? What does he believe in? What does he stand up for? And um, basing my relations and my actions then on these ideas. And once I developed this identity, then I needed to work really hard at protecting it. Because I was this separate individual with these very important belief systems, these opinions and ideas that, although I didn't like to admit it, I was sure were actually the correct ones and more important than anybody else's. But I had to guard that identity. I'd worked so hard to create it, based all of my life decisions on this identity, that now I had so much invested in it that I really had to guard it and protect it. So my speech became a weapon, if you like. So that if anybody criticized me, or if I th felt a threat from anybody, in all kinds of ways, then my speech was a way that I could protect and guard this identity, usually through um, judgment, criticism and blame of other people. And um, I look back now and it was actually really sad, because the way that that would play out in a practical sense would be that, um, so for example, when I heard a brilliant musician, you know, someone that was fantastically talented on the guitar. And I'd be sitting listening to it with, with some friends and someone just doing incredible things, playing beautiful music. And the conversation would often go something like, yeah, I mean, they're pretty good, but I saw this guy last week who was, you know, he, he was actually a bit, bit more talented. I'm not that into this style of music. And it was this subtle playing out and this subtle denigration and putting down of other people because I felt so threatened by this person's talent, because I can't play the guitar like that. 
And it was such a threat to me and my identity as being, you know, the most incredible person on the planet and the most <laughs> talented and, you know, and having to guard and protect this. And, um, but what I see is exactly how disempowering this was, not just to this brilliant musician playing the guitar, but to myself. Because basically what I was doing was playing out the same mechanism that I related to myself and my data with everybody else. So whenever I did something, there was always this post-mortem, that means looking over something that's dead, it's kind of apt description. This, this idea of what I'd done and always finding fault with what I'd done. Like nobody was as harsh a critic of myself as I was. Nobody even came close. If anybody had spoken about me the way I thought and spoke about myself, then well, I either would have had nothing to do with them or I would have punched them because it's like the way I treated myself. Everything I said was not good enough. I shouldn't have said that. Why did you say that? You know, you're sounding like an idiot now. Oh God, I wish I hadn't said that. I should have said that instead. Now they think all of this about me and this total self-absorption and total self-flagellation. You know, just whipping myself again and again and again. You idiot. You know, you could have done that better. You know, you're not as good as that person over there. And then the opposite, oh, you know, thinking how fantastic I am, how I'm the best person, you know, the, the most intelligent, I'm the most experienced. I know better than everybody else. And this is equally disempowering, putting everybody else down so I can make myself feel comfortable. This search for this sense of ease and openness and actually playing it out in all of these ways that were so painful and really... Um, yeah, I, I look back on it with a mixture of horror and humour because it was very, very painful but also quite funny the way that I used to relate and um, act this out in the world. And now I see that I have the option to recognise opening intelligence for short moments and begin to claim my birthright as an open-ended benefit creator. So all of these ideas about my identity and about who I was about how I needed to use my speech, about what benefit meant. All of these are recognised as data shining forth from open intelligence. And that simple recognition, that instinctive recognition, that in itself begins to shift things dramatically. Because there's a different context and perspective on all of these ideas. I begin to see that I can take responsibility for the way that I use my speech for the actions that I take. No longer giving away my responsibility to all of my ideas about everything, to other people and their descriptions of me, saying I'm good at this and I'm not good at that, but opening out and suddenly recognising that I have the capacity to contribute a great deal to this life. That all of these ideas that I'd believed in were just ideas, just data shining forth. And when I allow them to flow on by, that power is reclaimed. And so the speech becomes something that can in be incredibly beautiful and incredibly empowering, both for myself and the people that I'm speaking to, in all situations. And that happens in such an effortless way, not by then thinking, oh, how do I use my speech in this beautiful, empowering way, but by relying on your opening intelligence, your incredible wisdom, your innate knowledge to know exactly what will be of most benefit in each situation. And this is what you train up here in the Balanced View training. This is what is offered. This education for you to train up this power of great benefit within yourself. Not to give away your power to any figure, no matter how exalted, but to claim this power for yourself. And I see the results of this in well, like now when I go and listen to, to music, there's just amazing appreciation of the incredible gifts and talents of other people. There's nothing for me to guard and defend anymore. I don't have to worry about how brilliant other people are. I can actually really appreciate other people for the first time. There's this complete open-hearted relating that is totally natural and innate. And I know that because I'd always wanted it. I'd always wanted that openness in my relating. 
I'd always wanted it, but somehow it seemed like there'd been something holding me back. And that had just been this simple misunderstanding as to the nature of my mind, as to the nature of reality. And with every short moment, I reclaimed this birthright. I saw for myself the actual nature of reality. Not what anyone else had told me, not what I'd read in any book, but my own direct instinctive recognition. But because this training in the conventional use of the mind has been so pervasive in our society, it does re require another kind of education just to retrain ourselves in using our mind and tapping into this power of great benefit. And there's no mystery in this. The same methods that we used to train up in the conventional approach are now being applied to training up in relying on opening intelligence. So we talk about it. We write about it. We read about it. We share our experience of it. It's very, very simple. It's the same educational tools that are used in conventional education. And it's very, very simple. It's very easy. To recognize who you really are is not difficult because you've always been who you are. Training up in all of these other ideas was always difficult. And I look at these ideas I had about my identity and my nature and it was continually changing. I could never actually pin down who I was. I could never do it. I'd feel... Um, I'd feel lonely and um, like I wanted to be on my own one minute and so okay, that means that I'm an introvert, doesn't it? Because you know, I'm not happy and comfortable in this social situation. So right, okay, the label that applies there is an introvert. And then I'd go off and I'd be on my own and the loneliness and the, the, the sense of wanting to be around people and then I'd go and enjoy the company of people would you know, just spontaneously occur and okay, now I'm an extrovert, aren't I? That's what I am, I'm an extrovert, I'll pin that down, I'm someone that really likes to be sociable. And the next party would come and because I'm an extrovert I've got to go there, that's, that's what extroverts do, I need to show everyone how comfortable I am and I'd go and I'd feel completely awkward, like I didn't want to be there. This continual shift and change in the, the dynamic display, this flow of data. So get to know yourself <coughs> as you really are. You know, utilize the support of the four mainstays, Balanced View's educational system that supports you in this totally comprehensive way to become real about everything about you. And it's amazing the insights that you see, the more and more subtle details about the ideas that you've adopted around your identity and around what it means to be human, around your behavior around things like benefit and free speech, seeing things more and more clearly. And in that clear seeing is the recognition of our power to go beyond any of these descriptions in a completely natural, gentle, loving way. More and more stepping into this power of great benefit. This is like nothing I'd ever imagined. I had no idea that my life could be like this. Now, I'm a middle-class boy from West London. And more and more my life becomes one that is just this recognized more and more to be this spontaneous display of pure benefit. My speech transformed from sarcasm and cynicism to just complete love and openness. And that's not what I learned in the pubs of West London. <laughs> but it's becoming more and more my everyday lived experience. So test it out. Check out everything that's on offer here. You know, really approach this in a very clear-minded way. Test out what is on offer and see what the results for you are. Not what you think about it, not whether this might work or how it compares with that, but what are the actual results in your everyday lived experience. I hear from people all around the world sharing their experience about the practical benefits that they see in their lives from this really simple practice and the support of the Four Mainstays. They're really practical results, not some airy-fairy theoretic thing of, you know, we're all one and isn't it lovely, man, you know, just but actual demonstrations of practical benefit in their jobs, in their families, with their friends. Again and again, really, the inseparability of data and open intelligence means the practical demonstration of your powers of great benefit in your life with your relationships.
This is what we're talking about here. So give it a go, test it out. And then come back and ask questions about that. You know, what is your experience of this? The opportunity to come and ask questions about this is uh, a rare and precious one. So please, you know, come back and ask any questions you'd like about your experience. We're here just to share our experience and in that way support and clarify your experience.